good. Praise the Lord. We wanted to uh, have a kind of a special uh, presentation, I guess you'd say. Uh, the first part of uh, last month, in fact, maybe we left the 4th and came back the 14th. Uh, four of us, along with a lady from Katy, Texas, uh, went down to visit Pastor Pepe uh, Gutierrez and the work in Shalom Chiapas at uh, Convivencia Cristiana de Shalom, which is the Christian Fellowship of Shalom, which is a village there in Chiapas, Mexico. Uh, Chiapas, to give you just an idea, is what is the southernmost state in the country of Mexico, and it's about the size of the state of Texas. So we're not talking about a small area. It's a, a mountainous area. Uh, some of the best coffee in the world that you can get is grown right there in those uh, uh, mountains of uh, Chiapas. And uh, Pastor Pepe started to work there, and uh, it has grown. We've been involved with it uh, directly since 2006, my wife and I. And uh, our church, uh, as part of their foreign missions, helps support him uh, on a monthly basis. Now, I thought it was interesting because this is all your ministry. You know, the scripture says in Samuel, or 1 Samuel, I believe it is, it says that when David went to war, that some of his soldiers stayed by the stuff. That's how it refers to it, at least in my Bible. Stayed by the stuff. And so when they conquered, when they won in the name of the Lord, and they got all the bounty, they got all the uh, uh, plunder, so to speak, and everything, and they started bringing it back, and some of the soldiers said, well, don't give them any. They didn't go to war. And David said, no, 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 no. We all share equally because though we went, they sent us and they stayed and protected the stuff at home. And he says, so we share equally. And the Bible says that that became an ordinance, that became a law throughout all of Israel's history. And I want you to know that through your giving, you have helped support missions all over the world. We give to Israel, uh, a ministry there. Uh, we give to missionaries here at home that are going. We give to missionaries in Mexico. We give to missionaries in Guatemala. And so far this year, we still got the end of the month coming up, the end of the year. But so far this year, we've given almost $11,000 to world missions. 10900 Can you give the Lord a hand clap? <laughs> So I say all that to say this, is all the souls that are saved, all the disciples that are made, all the people that are baptized, you have a part of it. And so don't count it a small thing. You think, well, I'm just putting that money in the offering plate. You know, who knows where it goes? It goes to save souls. It goes to change lives. It goes to deliverance of people. It goes to see their families come to the Lord. And we want to share with you, we're going to take the first part of the service here to share with you from the ones that in our church here that went to Chiapas for that 10-day period to let you see a little bit of, of what's going on, what Pastor Pepe and, and he's doing in all his mission. So if the Tuckers and my wife would come on up here and uh, we'll stop and say different things along the way uh, to explain maybe some of the, sh the pictures, but... Bucky and Carolyn put together a slideshow. They had over 1,600 pictures. Wow. We're not going to bore you with that many. <laughs> but at potluck. But, yeah, at, at, at potluck while we're eating, uh, they're going to be showing pictures. He has uh, almost uh, 900 and something that you can go through. But we've got just about 100 that we want to share. They'll go real fast. But we want you to see a little bit of what happened. We started out and uh, we went to uh, Via Hermosa Tamaulipas, which is the state next to Guatemala, or next to Chia uh, Chiapas. And Chiapas is right next to Guatemala. But you have to drive, you, the closest airport is flying into Via Hermosa, where we flew into, and then 
It's a four-hour drive over the Sierra Madre Mountains to uh, get to Chiapas and Chilon. And so start things here. That one's on. Let me get you the other mic. Uh oh. Does that one work? <laughs> we can just share this one. There we go. Thank you, Lord. All right. Yes, ma'am. And y'all just jump in whenever you're ready. Stop. This picture really, oh, well. <laughs> the picture before. Can you hit the pause? Well, it was Pastor Pepe and. Um, Dennis and it was when that when you know when Pastor Pepe just picked it up, picked us up at um, Viamosa and just to see their faces there, there when how you know how much they you, you could tell how much love they had for each other and I just love that picture of the, the look at their faces well you can't see Dennis's but you can see Pepe and then here on our way um, we had a flat so it took us more than four hours to get to, <laughs> to Pepe's house. Is this it, oh stop. yeah, stop. <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. Isn't, isn't that where um, Betty? Betty? No? No. Okay. This, this is, uh, uh, that big orange building you see in the middle there is the Catholic Church. And uh, the Catholics have a large influence uh, in all of Mexico. But uh, in Chiapas especially, there's a lot of Mayan, uh, Indian. And so you have the Mayan religion, you have the Catholic religion, and you have the Christian religion. And uh, uh, that is Tila Chiapas, and it's one of the, uh, it, that particular cathedral is one known throughout all of Mexico. And, and just to make a brief notice here, uh, there was a pastor from Tila who came to the Bible school at Pastor Pepe's church because he wanted to learn how to, he had been preaching. He's a pastor, but he had never received any formal training. Well, back when he was first starting to witness and to evangelize in his town of, well, it was Petalcingo, actually, town very much like this, he was um, not welcome to preach the gospel. And some men came to kill him with a machete, and he raised his arm, and they cut his arm off. And so he comes, and he's eating with us and telling us how he wants to learn how to be a really good witness. <laughs> After he's just given his arm. Uh, needless to say, I didn't have much to say. Go ahead. Eating. At Pepe's. That's Pepe's home there. And there's his two sons. That's Pepe's uh, oldest boy and his youngest boy. That's our hotel that um, Bucky and I and Amanda stayed at. On our way to church. Yeah. And stop right here if you could. This is a place called Ulamash. It is literally a mission that Pepe started. Uh, one of his men in his church uh, knew a guy. He got saved. The man had come to town to sell coffee and the coffee beans. And uh, he came to Pepe's church. He got saved. He went back. He got people saved in his village, and they have built this little church in the middle of a cornfield, literally. And you have to drive and then walk through the cornfield to get to church. Uh, that, I was first up to preach the word on our trip. I preached at this church, and the Lord had told me to preach on, uh, on breaking generational curses, especially of alcoholism. And many people came forward, and we all had the blessing of going and laying hands on every single person. And, honey, could you estimate about how many people were there? I mean, that building oh, was no, full to overflowing. You can see. Go ahead and start, and you can, you can, you can see some of the crowd. They had a celebration with the flags, praying for the nations. That's me preaching. And that's the crowd outside, some of the crowd outside. The younger crew. Some That's a local dress. typical Mayan lady. That's the praying after Paula's work. And then we're eating again. <laughs> we ate a lot. That's How many, no Christian fellowships around food. <laughs> Stop. 
And this this is in front of the church and inside the church. Stop if you could. In Chalong. There you go. He has a World Hope Bible Institute, and this is his third year, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. This is his third year. He had, they just started a new school with uh, 24 students. They graduated 40, no, 30 some. 36. 36. They just graduated uh, this summer, and they have started a new school with 24. It's a, about a two-year program uh, that... Pastor but Pepe has here in They've church. never had the opportunity to receive any kind of Bible training, and they all feel called to spread the gospel, but they needed to be taught how to do it effectively. Okay, go ahead. Pepe's church, again. Dennis was preaching, as yeah, you can that, see. Yeah, that looks familiar this, to all of us, doesn't it? Oh, this is the baptism. Baby dedication. Baby dedication. Yeah. yeah. They dedicated two babies that day. They pray over all their children before they Wait, send them Stop off. it. Stop. <clears throat> it was beautiful. The child dedication was like nothing I've ever seen before. <laughs> Pastor Pepe and his wife would come, and he'd take the baby from the parents' arms at the front of the church. He'd pray over the baby. Uh, let's see, then he'd pray over the father and the mother as they were holding the baby, and then they'd give it to the elders to hold and to pray over. Each one of the elders, uh, leaders of the church, would pray over that baby, and then he'd go to the next one. It was so touching, powerful. They pray over their children before they send them off. He has a, a they bought a, a different building uh, for children's center, uh, and it's about a block and a half from the church it was what they could buy but they have rebuilt that home and have made it you'll see some pictures of it later but the children walk that block and a half from church to go to their children's center and uh, it's just fabulous to watch them go go ahead this is the first day so we gotta hurry that's inside the uh, the building where the children are taught and there's a group of children that were there that day. <laughs> Stop. Go ahead. The baptism. Oh, well, we, we had uh, five people get baptized, three ladies, four ladies, I guess, and an uh, Indian man. Um, and uh, we did it. They have a baptismal pool there at the Children's Center. And uh, this is a, one of the ladies getting baptized. Pastor Mario uh, was Pastor Pepe's pastor. And so he came over to uh, help with the water baptism. And he and I baptized the people. Go ahead. They really got dunked. <laughs> you got to hold them down for a little bit. <laughs> and, of course, after that we had to eat again. Yes. I Somebody's gained got seven pounds in ten days. Yeah. Somebody's got to suffer for Stop. Christ. And this, that is, was a, it, Stop. this is part of his building. He's built a second floor to the children's center to use as dormitories for the students and to uh, help house missionaries and stuff when they come down. Okay. And we don't have to stop on all of them. There's beautiful Yahalon. We lived there for a year in 2007, helping uh, with the construction of Pastor Pepe's church. It's in a valley between two large mountains. Beautiful. This is Pastor Pepe's family. Woo, Carolyn, stop. Oh, yeah. That was, stop. Um, I think, on a Monday, Monday night, yes. Monday, uh -huh. after, Monday evening service. They have a prayer service. And I got to share a, a little testimony of some of the things that uh, the Lord's been doing in my life lately. So this was that day. Amen. They we pray for, uh, uh, they have just a short teaching on prayer and they pray for an hour. And then Pastor Pepe, because he says prayer will change things, they uh, not only meet on Monday night, but they meet three mornings at 5 o'clock from 5 to 6, uh, three mornings every week. And they pray for our church, and they pray for the world, and they pray for all their missions, and well, for you can imagine for everything. And Go I ahead. asked him why? Why do you pray at five o'clock? That's 
sort of early. And he said, he said, well, you know, we first said, well, I guess it's before the day gets started, you know, people going to work or whatever. And he said, well, he said, this is for those who really want to be leaders in the church. And if they really want to be leaders, they'll come at 5 o'clock. And if they don't want to be a leader, they won't show up at 5 o'clock. He had 40. Go ahead. Just saying. This is uh, Chilon from the... The Tuckers were brave and walked all the way to the top of the mountain outside of Chilon. This was uh, headed to uh, Salsibiltik. Salsibiltik. Thank you. You're welcome. And Bucky ministered there. There's Pastor Pepe. Well, let him, let him tell what he taught on. Well, oh, it was just a, a testimony. I got one, uh, one morning about 3 o'clock in the morning, woke up. This is about two weeks Stop after right there, if you would. we uh, finished a Bible study <coughs> on the uh, spirit, um, soul, and body. And it's just a testimony using archery as the backdrop. So I gave the testimony last Wednesday as well. After, after he uh, got through sharing on the bow of the Holy Spirit and the era of faith and the target of the God's will in your life, um, the leader of that Professor Benjamin uh, is the leader of that little group in that village. And uh, he just stood up and he says, well, you heard it. Does anybody want to be saved? <laughs> that was his invitation. <laughs> and this guy in the back raised his hand. So I, I went over some scriptures with him to make sure he understood what he was doing. And uh, he got saved and brought his family to the church the next time. Go ahead. It's Pastor Pepe's son. That's the, the, the little mission that we went to. That's the members of that mission. These are some of the roads you got to travel on to get there. We're on our way to San Juan de la Montaña. We went up this mountain, and then down in the valley is the little town of There's St. Town. John of the Mountain. That's the size of the little town. Dennis preached there. I like the horse in the road here. There's some of the local dress. That's where Carolyn and I oh, yeah, got our that, beautiful blouse. Yeah, it was kind of interesting because we learned that, I think it was that Sunday before. before that this lady came up and wanted to take a picture of Paula and I and Amanda. So we just, you know, okay, because people were taking pictures every, all the time. And then as it turned out, they were taking a picture so they could size us to make our, our blouses for us. That was so awesome. They're from the Celtal uh, Indian, Mayan Indian tribe, and this is some of their handiwork. Go ahead. We okay. preach there. This is how they decorate their churches. I preached on God's will is to heal. And uh, after we got through, we asked if anybody needed prayer. That young man in the blue shirt, Ruiz, is his last name. He came up for prayer. And, uh, this one his, wasn't paying not, attention. Not this one in the blue shirt. It was yeah. another one. <laughs> and anyway, he said his back and his legs Stop. were hurting. Uh, and his feet were just almost killing him. So we prayed. And I knew that the Lord had healed him when we laid hands on him to pray. And he stood up. And you could tell it didn't seem like there was much anything. I said, do something you couldn't do. And so he kind of moved a little bit. I said, no, do what you can't do. And he did like that. And all of a sudden, he just started bawling because all the pain was gone. And he was completely Praise bawling. The Lord. Amen. Yeah, this is the owner of the, uh, the house that we preached at that night and his grandson. Right now, they're holding their church services in, in his house and, you know, believe in God. They'll be able to have their own church building yeah. before long. Go ahead. That's the front of his house. They carry their babies in slings. That was the people in that church that meets in his home. And of course, we ate again. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, that's and here's Peppy's uh, yeah. kitchen. We Dining spent uh, one full morning. We went to Mayan ruins of uh, Tony La. And uh, it, they're just outside a place called Ocosingo that's close to uh, Ch Chilon, where we were with Pastor Pepe. 
And all these people that he ministers to, or not all of them, but large percentage of them, are Mayan direct descendants from this culture. And so they have to give up a lot of their um, Mayan beliefs to accept the Lord. And they do Lots of still steps. practice a lot of the Mayan uh, religion in the smaller villages, especially those out in the mountains. This is some of the uh, ground around the, the area. I tried to uh, take pictures of street signs so I could kind of track it where it was on a map. And I took one picture and I asked Dennis, what, what does this say? And he said, parking lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was an important sign for something. I got a real good picture of it, though. <laughs> this is Pastor, or, or uh, Brother Chusa's family. Oh, that's Pastor Pepe and his youngest son. Uh, but Chus and is the worship leader at Pepe's church, and Chus has been with him since the beginning when he first came there with just his family to start the mission. Stop. Stop. Can you go, go back? back one. Go back one. Back. Back the other way. Yeah. Oh, well that you're going forward. Uh, well, yeah. There was a pit. Well. Uh, you're, never mind. Never Can mind. you stop it and back <laughs> up at all? Yeah, if you stop it, please. Hit the pause button. Yeah. There you go. Now back up if you can. Well, that's okay. Go ahead and tell them. And we'll... Oh, there was a, a several pictures back. There was a picture of Bucky and I in front of in Pastor Peppy's church, and we got to um, on their Thursday is their midweek service, and um, Bucky and I got to do a teaching at Pastor Pepe's church, and we based it on um, what we had learned in our Sunday um, e evening um, Bible study with Andrew Womack, uh, the Spirit, Soul, and Body. So we did kind of a little teaching based on that. Uh, are you through? Yeah. This, this is their house, uh, the next mission we went to, and if you're, what you're looking at is their stove. Their kitchen. Yeah, you know, their kitchen. And there's like two by 12s around filled with dirt. And then they make a stove inside that. They fed us a wonderful breakfast. I mean, wonderful breakfast. And then we went, we went to, uh, the, the man is named Fernando, his wife Tina. And I led Fernando to the Lord back in 2012. Uh, we had been going up to that little mission from uh, 06 uh, up till this trip. And... Uh, Finally, one day I told him, I said, I don't know when I'll ever be able to come back, but I said, would you like to accept the Lord? Because his family, all his family had received the Lord, but he never had. And he said, yeah, I think I would. And if I had not asked, he wouldn't have received. But he, he wanted to show us his farm, so we walked down one mountain and up the side of another mountain to go see his farm. Keep going, if you would. We washed our hands before we ate in that little bowl. There we are eating. Eating again. Pastor Peppy. That's Pastor Peppy. That's Pastor Peppy's son. That was some of the harvest from his uh, farm. The chicken coop for Ben. <laughs> and that's, that's a, a high stepper. <laughs> high stepper. This was the trail we went down to get to his farm. He used one tool, a machete, to, to clear, to plant, and to harvest. You can see her using it right there to peel an orange. We ate oranges and limes on the way down. We saw, yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so enjoying so it. <laughs> and he, he would have his corn, oh, my That's gosh. A That's a squash. Squash. <laughs> had the cornfield. Yeah, That's, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, that's her fan. <laughs> And uh, anyway. that's at Pastor, Pastor Pepe's house. No, it's not. No. no. Oh, no. Th Sorry. This is uh, Tavo's house. Yeah, stop it. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Brother Tavo and his wife, Mari. And the next picture you'll see after this is uh, Paula did a vacation Bible school down there one uh, week. And a young man, uh, he was 11 at that time. Yeah. Uh, he was 11 years old, and he gave his heart to the Lord and during that week. And his parents came to the church and said, what have you done to our son? 
and we said, what do you mean, you know? And they says, well, he was rebellious and he was all these problems and he has totally changed. And we want to know what have you done? And so uh, Pastor Pepe and uh, his wife and Paula and, and several of us went to their home one night and we explained about Jesus Christ and salvation. And so Tabo and his wife gave their heart to the Lord and he's the one uh, who is in charge of Ulamash where they have just built that little church uh, in those years. And next, go ahead. He's this now is a leader in of the, the church man. and pastoring the mission. He's that's, a teenager now. That's Elmer that's uh, 18 now. This is Ben. And this, this is, is Professor Benjamin. Benjamin's home. We were eating again. They love to feed us. <laughs> that's we're just gracious Benjamin enough to and eat his it. wife, Jacinta. And this is back at uh, Pastor Pepe's. I was showing uh, several of the guys how to shoot a bow, which was handmade. They actually brought uh, some wood, and we made the bow there. And people that were walking by the street saw what they were doing and stopped and asked to learn how to shoot a bow. One day we got to go to this ranch where they caught those huge fish and roasted them for us, and the whole, a lot of the church was there with us, and we just had a great time. Just a fellowshipping and being together. This, if you stop right there, uh, it, I don't know how well you can see it. That is Pastor Pepe's uh, father and mother. His name is Angel, and her name is Hope. <laughs> Go ahead. There's a rainbow in there if you can see it. And they pray over the nations at every single service. And that's when they were praying for the United States. Pastor Pepe ministry. Pictures of his church again. Paula ministering. Well, right before that was Amanda ministering, and then I ministered. Okay, hit to pause it, please. This is Pastor Pepe and his wife, Normie, and their daughter, um, Corey, uh, Corey is fixing to graduate as a dentist uh, from uh, medical school. And then his oldest son, the uh, uh, tall one there, Hiram, and his uh, young son, Johan. And uh, this is the last slide. Yeah. I, yeah. I would like, if y'all would, just extend your arms this way. Let's pray for Pastor Pepe and his five uh, mission works that he has started out of his church. Somebody lead in prayer. <laughs> Father, we just lift up Pastor Pepe and Normie and Corey and Iram and Yoham and all the ministries that you have placed in his heart and given him a vision for and now seeing it fulfilled. Father, we just ask that you'd continue to work mightily in and through Pastor Pepe and his family and his church. Lord, thank you that they are an example to us, Lord, of what a church is to do, to go out, to evangelize, to win the lost. Lord, we just ask that, Father, you'd continue to bless them, direct them, meet every need, anoint them, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for it. Lord, help us. Help us to be all you want us to be. Help us to do all you want us to do. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for letting us go in your name and being a part of it. Uh, we took down there with us uh, $1,500 from the church that helped give missions money to each of those individual uh, little mission churches to help them in the work that they were doing and to pay for our transportation expense. Gasoline down there is $3.74 a gallon. So all of that running around that he did, uh, y'all helped pay for that. And so you have a part in it. But thank y'all so much for sending us. <laughs> Would you hand me my Bible? I was asking the Lord, how do you follow up on something like that? And uh, 
He gave me a, a few verses out of John chapter 20. And uh, I'd like to just share with you, I titled this message, A Mandate for Missions. Uh, and a mandate is an order that's given. Uh, it's something that must be done, uh, must be carried out. And I believe God is speaking to us as a church and us as a people to do more than what we're doing. Um, whether it be in your daily walk or whether it be here at the church or whether it be in ministry to other people, uh, I believe God's got more planned for us than what we can imagine. John chapter 20 and starting with verse uh, 19. It says, In the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because of the fear of the Jews. Then Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace to you. Now I want us to look at this because I broke it down. As, as I was thinking about this, meditating about this, thinking about what to say, the Lord just started showing me things. I want to share with you just, I wrote down in this brief period of time what I believe the Lord is saying in these verses. He says, in the evening of that first day, you know the first day of the week is Sunday. The, uh, the Sabbath, Saturday, ends the week. Sunday starts the week. And so it was on Sunday when they were gathered together. The disciples were gathered together on Sunday. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. If you want Jesus in your life, you've got to come to church, folks. And I'm preaching to the choir. I realize you're here on a rainy day. So I, I congratulate you for having the wherewithal to get out in this kind of weather to be here. But I'm telling you, if you want Jesus to show up in your presence, you got to make it a regular habit to come to church. Not something that, well, I think I'll go this Sunday. Well, I, I guess maybe I'll make it Wednesday if I don't have something else to do. You know, we all are familiar with sowing and reaping. If you sow, you're going to reap more than you sow. Well, I want you to know when you come to church and you spend time listening to the Word of God, when you spend time in fellowship with other believers, you will reap so much more than you sow by just coming to church. I don't know about you, but I, all week long I sing the songs, Go Tell It On The Mount. I'm going to be singing it all week. You know? Or, or the drummer boy. pa rum pa pum pum You know? Think about it. it. You say, well, that's just a song. Hey, that is a spirit anointed song and you wouldn't have heard it if you hadn't been in church. So Sunday they were together together. Corporate worship is so important for the believer. It adds strength, it adds faith, it adds joy. Coming together and worshiping with fellow believers is so important. Don't pass up that opportunity. It said that they had the doors locked because of fear of the Jews. Did you know that outside these doors is a dirty, nasty world. Amen. All you got to do is turn on the 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock news to tell you that. I mean, everything, I pick up the paper and, and I'm shocked. You know, somebody committed suicide by running in front of an 18-wheeler. And, and there is horrible things out there, folks. And I don't know about you, but it's a scary world out there. And we need the refreshment. We need the rest of being together with fellow Christians. We need that respite of rest away from the world. And you do that when you come together. And it says, when all of that, you're considering all going on out in the world, you say, I'm going to take some time. I'm going to get along with God. I'm going to, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to be a part of what God is doing at Cowboys for Jesus. When you take that time to do that, when you make that commitment to the Lord, then Jesus comes. Then Jesus comes. You say, well, he's with me always. I know he's with you always, but there's a difference between him being with you always and him being with you with fellow believers. I don't know about you, 
but I'm strengthened just being with other Christians. Whether it's just two or three at a Bible study or whether it's a church full of people as we have on Sunday morning. And he said to them, he said to them, Jesus is saying to you, peace to you. I don't know about you, but peace is important to me. I tell you what, the stress of the holiday season, being with a bunch of relatives at Thanksgiving, come on now, I'm being truthful. It's stressful. It's hard. The Christmas season is hard. You're thinking about gifts and, and, and doing this and I got that and my budget is just so and, and all of this. and It's part of life, folks. But it's hard. And we need peace. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah foretold of Jesus that would come into the world. He said, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of peace. You're going to only find peace in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you, but I give my peace unto you, the peace that passes all understanding, a peace that you can't understand, but you can enjoy. And that only comes from Jesus Christ. He said, my peace to you. John chapter 14 and verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Your heart, your heart, your heart must not be troubled or fearful. Did you know when you put Jesus Christ as priority in your life, it doesn't matter what else happens around you, you can have peace on the inside. That, the world doesn't understand that kind of peace, but it only comes through Jesus Christ. Let's go back to uh, John chapter 20, verse 20. Now it says, having said this, the peace to you, he showed them his hands and his side, so his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. His disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. He showed him his hands and his feet. Did you know when you get a picture of Calvary, when you get a picture of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for your sins, for your forgiveness, for your deliverance, for your healing, when you realize that because of his stripes that he bore on his back, because of his bleeding and dying on the cross, I'm telling you what, we don't preach the cross enough in churches anymore but it was because of the cross of Calvary, because of what he did, because of his suffering and his death that we can have life. Because he died, we can live. We can live in peace. We can live in victory. Luke chapter 24 it tells the same story. I want us to read through this. Because it's the same story, just a different version, one from John, one from Luke, talking about the same thing. It says, as they were saying these things, he himself stood among them, and he said to them, peace to you. So we're talking about the same deal here. Next verse. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. I mean, they had seen Jesus dead on the cross, put in the tomb. He died for them, and they didn't realize it. Next verse. Why are you troubled, he asked them. And why do you doubts arise in your heart? You ever have doubts arise? I wonder if I'm really saved. I'm wonder, I wonder if this Christian stuff is really worth it. People ask that. Next verse. Look at my hands and my feet. That is, it is I myself. Touch me and see. Did you know Jesus wants you to have a personal relationship with him? It's only when you personally put your hands in his side, when you put your hands in the scars, when you realize that he died for you. Jesus would have come to earth and died on the cross and suffered because of your sin, because of your sickness, because of your deliverance. If there had been nobody else, 
He loves you that much. Oh, we need to realize that, folks. He said, because a ghost doesn't have flesh and blood or bones, as, as you see, I have. Next verse. Having said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Next verse. But while they still could not believe because of their joy and we were amazed, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? I can identify with that. So they gave him a piece of raw fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Do you, you realize what's going on here? He says, hey, I'm back from the dead. God didn't leave me because I paid the price for sin. I came to destroy the works of the devil and I've done it. I've overcome sickness. I've overcome disease. I've overcome sin. I am the Lord thy God, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. That's what he's saying. And they still couldn't believe. And he said, well, what is it going to take? Give me some food. (laughs) Did you know God will do everything necessary so that you will be saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? He goes the extra mile. You say, well, I don't know. No, he wants you to know. You can know that you're saved. The scriptures tell us we can be assured of our salvation. If you have any doubt about your salvation, talk to me. Because I tell you what, when you're saved, you save. You know and you know her. And you can know that you are saved. Next verse. He told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. See, he's given us his word. He's given us the Bible so that we can know that we are saved, folks. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, that was their Bible in that day. He said, every bit of that's about me. You can follow Jesus in every single book of the Bible. He's from word go till we're at home with the Lord. I'm from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. Next verse. Then he opened their minds to understand. Have you ever read the Bible and all of a sudden you understood what it was saying? Yeah. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Man, it's like one missionary friend of mine said, he says, it's like when Jesus reaches down to kiss the earth and you get caught in a smack. <laughs> it's just plum good. You know, it's just good. And I tell you what, Jesus, he will reveal himself to you if you will just seek him. If you'll look to him in the scriptures. Next verse. He also said to them, this is what is written, the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day. Glory to God. Next verse. And repentance for forgiveness of sins. Aren't you glad your sins have been forgiven? If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your sins are forgiven. That is so important. And that it would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's the message that you have to take to everybody. You don't have to tell somebody they're a sinner. You go out in the world, you talk to anybody, they know I've done wrong. You don't have to tell them that they're a sinner. What they're looking for is salvation. What they're looking for is forgiveness. What they're looking for is deliverance. What they're looking for is healing. What they're looking for is freedom and not oppression. And it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are to proclaim His forgiveness. We are to proclaim His salvation to the world. Next verse. Verse 21 in John, he says, John the 20th chapter, he said, Jesus said to them again, peace to you. See, it's important. If he said it twice in one conversation, don't you think he means it? Peace to you. As the Father has sent me. As the Father has sent me. As the Father has sent me. He left the comfort of heaven to come to earth. We are celebrating his birth this month. He became a child. I like the way one preacher said it, and I don't mean anything sacrilegious by that, but he had dirty diapers. (laughs) 
someone had to teach him to eat. Can you imagine the God that created the universe took on became incarnate flesh. He took on the flesh of a human being and grew up just like every other kid. Come on. He was son of man, son of God. And he lived the human experience. That was why he was sent so that he could pay the price for human beings, for me and you. If he hadn't been all man, he couldn't have paid the price but he couldn't pay the price just being man. He had to be God too. Son of man, son of God. And he was sent for this purpose. For what purpose? To destroy the works of the devil. Oh, glory to God. He gives us peace. Let's get down to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world in this way. That's why he sent Jesus. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. The wages of sin is death. I'm pausing for effect there, folks. The wages of sin is death. But praise God, he's overcome death. My Savior, I overcame death. And because he died, I can live. In him I live and move and have my being. And you can too. You can know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can have that freedom that only he can give. It says... That everyone, everyone, everyone who believes in Jesus will not perish but will have everlasting life. But he didn't stop there. Next verse. For God did not send his son into the world that he might judge the world. He didn't have to tell you you're a sinner. Come on. But that the world might be saved through him. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except from me. But everyone who comes to me and believes shall be saved. Oh man, what an eternal message. What a wonderful message we have to give to the world. When you get in the checkout line at the store and you can see that woman's having a bad day, give her the good news. Jesus is going to make your day better, sister. Mister, let me tell you, it's going to get better. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. I'm telling you, you need to learn to share Jesus in every way because it said, as he was sent into the world. Let's go back to the 21st verse. John, he says, I also send you. That's your mandate right there, folks. Jesus is saying to you, I came on your behalf, now you go on mine. You got good news. If you had something really great, would you do any good by holding it all to yourself? When you see people crying, dying, hurting all around you, you got to throw them that life preserver. When they're drowning in the world of fear and frustration that's in the world all around us, we come to church and we receive that peace we receive Jesus. We get more of our, uh, of our joy and our fellowship because we've been in church. But when we go out, don't leave it at the door, folks. Amen. Take it with you. Hallelujah. Take Jesus with you. Take the joy with you. Take the peace with you. Just as Jesus came into his disciples and says, peace to you. You speak to the world around you and say, peace to you. When you're calm in the midst of the storm, people will come to you and say, what's going on? Just like those parents came to little Elmer, 11-year-old boy, but they could see the difference. The rebellion had been driven out of him. How? Because he got the peace of God that passes all understanding. 
As Jesus was sent into the world, so he sends us. You say, well, how can I do that? Man, I'm sure no big preacher. I, I, I don't know how to share. I, I'm not for sure with any of that. John chapter 20, and verse 22. He tells us, and Jesus gives us this example here in the book of John. Just verse, uh, chapter 20 and verse 22. He says, after saying this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you. The Bible says that that same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body. That means your old flesh and blood body has the Spirit of the living God dwelling on the inside of you. You might not be able to be the witness. You might not be able to speak out. But the Holy Ghost in you will. If you'll just release yourself to him. If you'll get up in the beginning of your day and say, Lord, this is my plan, but I'm making myself available to your plan. Lead me by your Holy Spirit. Guide me. Give me the words to say. The scripture says in one location, it says, don't worry what you're going to say when you're in front of somebody. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Don't depend on your own strength. Trust not in yourself, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The he is the Holy Ghost will direct your path. He said receive the Holy Spirit because it's in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you're able to be a witness, that you're able to do what Jesus did. He said, because I go to my Father and I'm praying for you, these things shall you do and even more shall you do. You say, what more can I do? You can reach people that nobody else can reach. You've got a sphere of influence. You've got a a group of people, whether it be at school, whether it be at the store, you've got an influence with other people and you need to let your message be known. Peace to you. Peace to you. I gotta quit. Second Corinthians five and verse eighteen. Second Corinthians five eighteen. Don't you all appreciate Miss Betty back there? She she's got one wing in a sleeve because she broke her shoulder. And she's using the wrong hand to try and do all of this. And I think she's doing a wonderful job. I'll tell you what, a trooper she is. It says, now everything is from God who reconciled us. Aren't you glad you're reconciled? Reconciled is getting the books right. You ever had to balance your books? Or like my wife, you know, well, I still got checks left. It's okay. (laughs) No, you know. Everything is from God because he has reconciled us to himself. In other words, we have right standing with God. And he gave us what? He gave us what? He gave us what? You see, it's not my job to be the minister. It's yours. You are ministers unto God. You are kings and priests unto our God. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? to tell other people that they can be right with God. Next verse. That is, in Christ, that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins or trespasses against them, and he has committed that message of reconciliation to us. In other words, he sent Jesus into the world so that Jesus could send us into the world with the same message. Peace to you. Glory to God. Next verse. Therefore, you know what the there is there for? Because we have been reconciled to God, because we've been made right with God, folks, we can share that with others. And it says, therefore, because he has given us this message of forgiveness of sins, of healing, of deliverance, of an abundant life in Jesus, because he's given us that message, therefore, We are ambassadors for Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm an ambassador for Christ. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them.
I'm an ambassador for Christ. Now you've said it, you believe it. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, certain that God is appealing through us. See, he's done his part, he's waiting on us to do ours. He's appealing through us, and we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be a missionary, be an outreach. Tell somebody this week, God loves you. He sent his son to die for you. Tell somebody they can have peace. Tell somebody that they can be healed. Tell somebody that their sins are forgiven. Oh, I'm telling you what, folks. What a responsibility we have. What a privilege we have. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Bow your heads. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Is there anybody here this morning So I don't know for a certain that my sins are forgiven. I don't know for a certain that if I was to die this very moment that I'd go to heaven. I don't know. But I want to know. I want to know that peace that you're talking about, that peace that he said is to you. I want that peace in my life. I want to know that God, I'm right with God. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I want to have a prayer with you. Anybody here? I'm going to start on my left and look. All this section, anyone wants to be saved? Anybody wants to know salvation in this section? Right here, I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else over in this section? Anybody at all? All right. Let's all pray this together with this one that has her hand raised. And repeat with me. Oh God, I know without Jesus I'm lost. I'll die and go to hell. But Jesus came. And he died for me. And I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I declare by Jesus' stripes I am healed. By Jesus' blood I am forgiven. And that by Jesus' death I can live for him. Come into my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me power. Give me strength to be a witness for Jesus. Help me to reconcile others with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I can call you Father because I'm your child. And I thank you that I'm saved. I thank you that I'm delivered. I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got a book for you. We got a Bible and a little book. We want you to read that book. It's real important. It tells you what's happened to you in the family of God. And you're part of our family. You're part of the family of God from this day forth. You're a changed person. Receive those. Amen. We got dinner on the ground. Literally, it's not on the ground, it's too wet. So we're going to set up some tables. It takes just a little bit to take the chairs out and to put up some tables and eat. We'll eat going through this door right here. But let's uh, bless the food before we go, okay? And I encourage you, stay. It's a rainy, nasty day outside. Stay inside and enjoy some fellowship around food. Break bread together, amen? Father God. All right, visitor to the front of the line. All right. Father God, we praise you and thank you. This is the day you made. We rejoice and we're glad in it, Father. Help us, Heavenly Father, as we are sent by Jesus to pronounce peace to this world. We thank you for the food, for everybody that prepared it. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Bless the food to our body's good, removing sickness and disease from the midst of us. And everybody said, Amen. And y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>